Nityanam guys, let us stand for Sanatana Hindu Dharma and the Sampradaya's lineages and Guru-Disciple relationship. I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. Again, expanding on the, uh, this uh, Guru-Disciple relationship, like I mentioned in some other videos, anti-Hindu forces, they, this, they want to destroy this relationship or they want to make this relationship seem fake or stupid or irrelevant or foolish or whatever they try to do. They want you to stop cherishing it. I have a... Yeah, I want to share something before I jump into that beautiful topic. You guys are aware right now there's some things right now uh, some things are going on with the Gurukul in India and all that. And um, I want to share about the importance of grasping the space from which the person is operating and engaging with you. And I had this amazing visualization which happened yesterday while I was listening to Satsang. And Swamiji was basically saying, I don't know, he, he, he said something, but I had a, a realization where um, we, we've seen this cartoon where you see the donkey Somebody sitting on the donkey with the fishing pole and he has a carrot in front of it and then the donkey tries to run after the carrot and because he wants, because of the greed of wanting the carrot, he kind of is motivated to move forward and that's basically how the rider is making the, uh, the donkey move towards the direction in which he wants to go. What happens in life and what I feel, what I'm realizing more and more and what I want to uh, share, and, and that is a very powerful cognition that Hinduism uh, gives um, his uh, devotees or people who follow or live Hinduism, I should say. Um, you have to look in which direction, when somebody engages with you, you have to look in which direction is this person trying to bring you. So the visualization I have is this guy sitting on the donkey with the fishing pole and the carrot and he's making the donkey move in one direction. Then I thought, oh my God, see, in that situation in Gujarat, they attacked our Gurukul. Initially, they attacked by saying kids are beaten, they are uh, starved and they are sleep deprived. With these false allegations, they came and took and they took some of the female monks into custody without having any rules. They violated the rules of children. They've made children, they integrated children and made them see some some adult content and some nothing to do with the investigation that they were supposed to do. And then uh, two of the female sannyasis are held captive in prison for no reason. And they're saying that, anyways, it's a big mess and um, unjustified and against the, the basically the, the rights of the individual. And it's, it's a big, big nonsense. And so they attacked us with this idea of saying, beaten, starved and sleep deprived, not fed properly and sleep deprived. Then suddenly yesterday, they're coming and saying, oh, no, no, no. Actually, the problem is they have freedom. Kids are not monitored. They do whatever they want. And then you're seeing this, like, what, the, what is going on? Then I saw, my God, see, see the space. See, their intention is to destroy the Gurukul. When I say this is the path in which they want to bring us, destroy the Gurukul. One day they will put a carrot in front of the donkey to make the donkey move towards the destruction. The donkey is basically us or the, the society uh, in that situation, the, the public, the pu public opinion. They want to, to, they put a carrot. So initially they will say, oh, they're sleep deprived and that's why they should be dismantled. And then suddenly they change and they say, no, children are not monitored and this is not the right way to handle children and all that. And that's a salad. At that moment, you put a salad in front of the donkey. Instead of a carrot, you change it to a salad. If you're deluded and you're just stuck with what is in front of your eyes, you will feel, oh, a carrot is different, salad is different, right? And you'll be stuck in that nonsense. But the reality is, whatever they put in front of you, it's to make you walk in the same direction. They want to destroy the Gurukul. So whatever they say is nonsense. You, we have to see what is the space from which they're coming from. They're coming from a space of they want to get rid of the Gurukul. And in the meantime, they play different magic tricks left and right to play with the opinions of people, the emotions of people and get what they want done. So that's something very important. We have to always look when somebody, when I engage with somebody, when somebody engages with me, what is the inner space from which the person is coming forward? And you have to relate to that person from the inner space, not the carrot or the salad that they put in front of you, not the words or the stories that they tell you. 
Because people will tell stories to get what they want, but you need to know if what they want from the relationship that they want from, the, from you, basically, from the relationship they have with you, is it something aligned to what you want? So for that, we need to see the space. We need to constantly contemplate what is the space they're coming from? What is the space they're coming from? You know, where am I heading? Sometimes we get so deluded and uh, dis distracted by uh, carrots, apples, and all that stuff in front of us that we're not realizing that we're walking towards death. Uh, but we need to realize that and we need to stop being distracted by the carrots, salads, and uh, broccolis, and nuts, and apples, and pears, and apricots. Yeah. So, second topic. So that's dismantled. So make sure you see the space because anti-Hindu forces, that's what they do. They play with this stuff, they distract us, but their intention is to destroy Hinduism. And uh, we need to see that and not fall for that and stand for Hinduism. Second thing is, I wanted to talk about the Guru. Um, how? Guru is a blessing. So again, these people, they will say, you're just following a man, you're just following a leader, you're surrendering to, uh, to a certain person, whatever they say, all kind. They make the whole thing look completely stupid and it looks like you're, you're just somebody like a mercenary to, to a leader and, uh, and, and just being brainwashed and stupid and zombified and all that. See, there are few things which are very precious and that should be experienced in life. Seeking prayerfulness, surrender, gratitude. So these are the main ones that are coming right now, top of the head. These experiences can only be truly experienced when you have a guru. And what I clicked with is like, oh my God, that is one more reason why guru is so important in someone's life. Because guru becomes the embodiment that allows you to cherish and experience these states, seeking, prayerfulness, uh, gratitude, devotion, surrender. So that is why, that is the click I had, that is why Guru is such a blessing. Because he becomes the embodiment that allows you to cherish that. We can cherish more prayerfulness by constantly remembering Guru. We can cherish more seeking by listening to Guru's words and contemplating on them. We can cherish surrender by aligning to the Guru's uh, powerful cognitions. And, um, and we offer gratitude when, you know, we experience more and more auspiciousness in our life. We just cherish more and more gratitude. And the more you cherish surrender, the more you cherish gratitude, the more you cherish seeking, the more you cherish prayerfulness, the more you will, be, you will experience the auspiciousness of, of, the, of the life of the universe, of Paramashiva. Shiva means causeless auspiciousness. Auspiciousness happening for no reason. But we don't realize that. When somebody is punching you in the face or somebody is hitting your car in the traffic or somebody stole your lunch, you don't feel that the universe is auspicious because we are stuck in a lower level of delusion and we have to snap out of it. And so experiencing surrender again, seeking uh, prayerfulness, gratitude, all these things will allow you to unclutch and with the space that you gain from unclutching, you realize the bigger thing and you realize the auspiciousness of life and how Paramashiva is causeless auspiciousness. And the more you cognize Paramashiva as causeless auspiciousness, Guru as causeless auspiciousness, because Shiva comes in the life of a seeker, a sincere seeker in the form of Guru. So when Guru becomes the embodiment of causeless auspiciousness, you realize that you are that and you realize that you are Paramashiva. So yes, that's what I want to share in this video. So be careful. Always look at the space from which somebody is coming. What do they want from you? Sometimes they will bring some ideas, some concepts, some justifications. What do they want from you? See, if I'm engaging that video, the space from which I'm coming from is stand for Hinduism because Hinduism has depth, it has value, it is real, and it can lead to the ultimate experience of bliss and fulfillment. And the purpose of what I'm sharing is for you is for you to click and decide, yes, I want to be more aligned to the Hindu principles. I want to live Hinduism. I want to revive this tradition and these lineages and everything, this knowledge. So that's the space. We need to see where is the people coming from. Anti-Hindu forces, they will put some ideas into your brain. Sometimes it will look very logical. But where is it going to lead you? Drop Hinduism. Then, what's the point? 
So yes, that's what I want to share. Comment, subscribe. I love you guys. I love you all. I love you. Shave. And like. Nidirando. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes. Om Nityananda.